reminisce, I reminisce. Uh. Yeah. Hey everybody, it's your girl Ken Lo back at it again with a new video. And today I have our girl Ja of Point Blank Vintage. How are you today? Hi. I just want to say I'm happy to be here in the studio space. He has great items and let's get into it. So hey. let's tell us how you started with Point Blank Vintage and what do you plan on doing? Um, originally I started it in November 2016. Um, it's basically like a branch of my brand, Point Blank, which I style personal shops mm -hmm. um, and do wardrobe styling. Um, but I just, probably about 90% mm, of my wardrobe is like thrifted. Okay. And when I moved out here, because I'm not originally from here, um, I came across a lot of like thrift stores that had so much good stuff that I could not fit. And right, I'm right. like, I can't just leave it here because it's a good <laughs> price, so I need to take this. Right. Um, and I mean, with me being the type of person I am as far as like my style, mm -hmm. a lot of people like see that and admire it. So I'm like, all right, so let me just, you know, spread that out to right. the world. Like, y'all can have it too. <laughs> That's what's um, up. But yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So as you said, you're not originally from here. Tell us where you're um, originally from and how was the transition for you? I am originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. Um, I went to school in Atlanta, Georgia. I uh, went to Clark Atlanta University. Shout out. How was that? I know a lot of people like went to that school and they say it's like awesome. Like, yes, yeah. it's nothing like going to a HBCU at all. Like, okay. there's no other experience. Like, you can't really describe it. Um, <laughs> But, I mean, I think it's great, especially, like, you know, being around your people, number right. one, and then learning, um, of course, about your people, which you have not learned mm -hmm. in, you know, in school previous years. But, and then just to learn things differently of how to work or stand out in a business field that is not primarily black people. Right. So, that's great. But it's like, sometimes it's like, eh, like, I don't need to be learning about Frederick Douglass while I'm in math. Like, right, exactly. But I get it. Like, you know, I love it, though. I love CAU. That's my place. I love him. That's cool. Yeah. So tell us where your style, um, like, really came from. Like, how did you, who do you look up to? Who influenced you to get your style? Um, honestly, it kind of, like, just now came to a head. Um, when I was growing up, like, middle school, elementary school, I wore uniform. Mm -hmm. And then, um, like, we had, like, Casual Friday. So, like, I would try oh, okay. to do the most right. on most Fridays. <laughs> um, and then I got to high school, just, like, like a free-for-all. So, I just kind of, like, pick what I like and mm -hmm. just, like, kind of put it together. Um, and then, like, I had, like, a kind of, like, a major weight loss when I was in school. So, mm -hmm. that also, like, helped me dress the way I may have wanted to dress and mm -hmm. I couldn't before. Right. Um, so I kind of just mainly I just pick whatever I like really and just try to piece it together. I like to go for unique pieces. I like okay. am in love with jewelry and like if I can see something and I'm like I can wear this probably like three or four different mm -hmm. ways. I'm gonna get it. Definitely. And I'm very frugal. Right. I'm a, not well, even say frugal. Man. I'm gonna say I'm cheap because I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm like if I could get like 15 shirts for mm -hmm. like thirty dollars versus. Right. You know, paying $40 right. for one, you know what I'm saying? So, that's that. I mean, I don't really look up to people as far as my style goes. I mean, Rihanna is, of course, my girl. Um, like, I love how edgy she is. Mm -hmm. um, like, SZA, that's my girl. Um, Solange. Like, those are people that I kind of, like, identify with, I guess, in my style a little bit. But I'm pretty unique. I kind of, like, I look up to myself. No. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, would you want to style these people one day? Um, for sure, for sure? Yeah and no. Like, I'm not really opposed to it. Like, okay. but I like working with everyday people that just want to stand out. Um, I feel like celebrities, they have, you know, a certain image or a certain... Mm -hmm. um, direction that they need to go as far as like their style right. or their image you know um and it's like restricted a little bit but i like to work outside of like restrictions outside of the mm -hmm. box so um i think that allows me to do that with regular people but i like wouldn't be opposed to it like i want to be like june ambrose status like june okay. ambrose is like <laughs> the thing this is what i say when i say that like June Ambrose, people know who she is, but they don't know who she is. Like, they hear the name, but they don't know what she do. Yeah, tell you me, know. but I, I, I ain't gonna hold you. I don't know who that is. So, <laughs> so she just put me on. So, you, you just put me on. So, I tell mean, us who, who she is and where you, where you get from her. Okay. 
Now, that's somebody what, I can what say. You get from her. Okay, I got you. That's somebody I can say that I do look up to as far okay. as like my style, career wise as well. Okay. Um, okay, she's a celebrity stylist, creative director. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, I don't know if you ever see her, but she wears like these really big hats, like the Pharrell big hat. She usually wears them like really big, like off to the side or like the whole Erica Badu like like layering kind of I know, situation. I know what you mean. Mm-hmm. Um, but she had her own show for a while, and I mean, she just kind of like does a lot of in and out things. Like she has a line with QVC and like oh, okay. stuff like that. But she does so many. She curates a lot of different things, but she also is like a rock mom what she calls it like she has two kids she bring her kids around with her like i like how famous she is but mm-hmm. she's not that famous right I see what like you, mean. you see what i'm she saying she made a name for herself right she keeps like key, you if know you know who she is you're supposed to know who she is right and that's what i like okay yeah so for you do you want to be like one day like follow those steps not saying follow her the same journey but one mm-hmm. day being her footsteps where you live in a life where you know people know you you're happy, mm-hmm. you're comfortable having kids, you know, think things like that. Definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, that's one person I look up to as far as career wise. Mm-hmm. Um, like I would like to be known where I need to be known at. Right. I don't really want to be famous. Like I want to be able to walk into McDonald's even though I don't eat McDonald's, don't eat McDonald's. <laughs> um, like I want to be able to walk into Chipotle if right. I want to get me a burrito bowl and not be swarmed with people, you know what I'm saying? I see you and too. like have right. a family and do what I do, but also be you know, very well known mm-hmm. and called on or whatever for my craft and that, you know. Okay. So, do you, um, I'm not gonna say look up to, like you said, but do you follow anybody else in Philly that does like different vintage, um, clothing lines or just clothing lines in general and get um, any like ideas? I follow a few people like okay. on social media, um, not that many, um, mainly probably like the. Uh, major thrift stores that I go to, um, like their pages. You know? Yeah, they are overpriced. <laughs> I, um, I do get that a lot. I do get that a lot. Like they're very overpriced. And I was like, and one day I went shopping in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, no, we could have held that. Exactly. That fifty dollars could have something. Exactly. I mean, don't get me wrong. They do have some good stuff because yeah, they, they are do. they are they very really picky, mm-hmm. um, which is good. Um, but. I mean, like, I got a pair of Creepers from there that okay. were originally $130, but right. I got them for, like, 25 bucks, And that's oh, good, okay. like, you know, but not so much Buffalo Exchange. Maybe, like, um, Bulk Vintage is, like, okay. one place that I get a lot of my stuff from. Um, I just kind of, like, keep in the circles of, like, where I will get my pieces from. Okay. That's really, I mean, I look out for other people, like, as far as, like, competition-wise and, mm. like, maybe working with them. Um, like, I do a bunch of pop-up shops. Okay. So, um you know, just to stay connected, like to stay connected and knowledgeable about, you know, my competition and my people. So, that's what's up. Yeah. So, speaking of which, like, you know, working with other people, do you plan to work on with uh, um, with other stylists in Philadelphia or just the regular day by day people to style them up? Um, I mean, I'm not opposed to working with other stylists. Okay. I feel like this is no offense to anybody that styles. Um, I just feel like people that do style, they have their own vision, their own work ethic, and their own mindset. And I feel like sometimes maybe intimidation or feeling or ego gets in the way of I like the project or the situation at hand versus right. we working as a team. This is what's, what's going right. on. This is for them. This is for us. And right. Um, and like I said, I'm I'm very personable with like my clients and like the people that I do work with. So. I like to make sure that they have that one-on-one attention with me. Um, And like I was saying earlier, like if somebody comes to me, like I need, I'm looking for this type of piece or Mm -hmm. something for this video shoot. Like I can pull from my collection or, you know, go out and myself, or I can reach out to other people and I still extend my hand to Mm -hmm. other thrifters, other curators, other stylists, you know, just to have that um, connection just in case, just to help each other out. But as far as like working together, I'm not opposed to it, right. but like, so I just rather about, do it yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah. And with everything that you're doing, like doing everything by yourself, can that sometimes be stressful? Oh, yes. Definitely. <laughs> like, what's the most stressful time you've had, you know, going out by yourself, getting things for other people, going into, into your collection? Um, well, I do work full time. Oh, okay. Um, and I mean, I do this pretty much like part time, but full time. Mm-hmm. Um, I could probably say the most stressful it's honestly since i've started it's been pretty smooth sailing mm-hmm. um it's been like a struggle of course like 
getting stuff together and like right. getting my studio space and like stuff like that but um probably i did a i did a pop-up show in jersey and it? <laughs> it was very interesting um <laughs> it was really cool it was in a nice space it was like in this beautiful studio space mm-hmm. they had like a um like a pop-up shop area like where they okay. house like in name or in house brands mm-hmm. like they did like t-shirt printing it had like a, a recording oh, studio wow. in there mm-hmm. like it was like so much going on um but the way that it business wise the way that it mm-hmm. worked i didn't really like it so much okay. um and i also felt like i was like rushing or like i feel like it wasn't really worth it um as much because i like rented a car to go out there because my be point the best but <laughs> um i rented a car to go out there and like going back and forth and mm-hmm. gas and the time to put in a setup and right. all that type of stuff um and i had one person helping me but like if i was to do it by myself it would be nutty and right. i didn't think it was worth it like i didn't think the money was worth it um at the end of the day but i mean that's just oh, that was a learning lesson for me yeah. you know and that was my first pop-up shop that i ever did oh, okay, your first one. Okay. yeah so it was like it was a learning lesson i got to meet some cool people okay. you know i got made some good sales some followers but it just it wasn't really cool. No. <laughs> so, being as though you know that was your learning lesson, what mm-hmm. else do you learn in the journey of you know getting things? Just just getting you know, like your everyday, everyday. What's your everyday burning? What, what kind of things do you learn? In the process? Um, I mean, you learn pretty much your you learn about your brand mm-hmm. every day. Um, I learn about my customer and my brand. I guess a lot mainly because of the interaction I get from like social media from my customers right. and like what are people responding to okay um and i think that i guess being in the game of like thrifting and curating it's like mm-hmm. that's something that you got to pay attention to because if you get a bunch of stuff that nobody really wants or right. it's sitting in your inventory for you know months at a time then it's like you wasting your money um <laughs> But then I also learned, like, even with thrifting, it's like, even if it's so cute or, you know, you can sell it, like, it is some imperfections that people don't care about, but there are some, sometimes people do care about them. Okay. But um, just being a little bit more picky with um, picking pieces and, like, checking them out with um, imperfections and, like, sizing and, like, stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. like, little little pieces stuff just to remember, um like to keep your customer in mind um i feel like my customer could be like eight different people um but they all could like this one shirt Mm -hmm. but like how can i sell that right i see what you're saying yeah so where do you want to take your brand Uh, like do you want to take it internationally do you want to just keep it here do you just want to keep it in the city um so right now i'm actually in the works of opening my own retail space Oh, that's nice. Yes. So, how is that going for you? Uh, it's a process. It's very exciting. Okay. Um, shout out to the Women's Business Development Center of Philadelphia. Yes, y'all are a <laughs> lifesaver. Um, it's a nonprofit program that um, basically helps women of all kind of um, levels of business. If you want to start a business or if you've already been a business, you've been a CEO, just oh, to wow, learn. Okay. okay. Um, and I've been going through the process with them and, you know, getting finances together to help you get your license and, mm-hmm. like, your certifications and, like, That's put nice. you in front of the Small Business Association, like, everybody that you would need to be a part of. Um, but it's been a, it's, it's a slow journey. Um, but that's mainly where I want to take this right now. Um, it's basically to open my own thrift store, but I have, like, other plans yeah. um, as far as keeping i uh, keep it in the thrifting world but i want to basically open a space for um artists to basically showcase their work okay. so artists of every kind as far as like painting sculptures right. fixtures fashion designers jewelry designers um just a space for like local artists to have that to you can send somebody there and still make money or you don't got to worry about trying to do pop-up shops or like right. trying to sell your art online um, so this basically is my way of like helping birth that baby. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you know, as you said, like you know, you want people to have their you know things that do yours and stuff like that. Like when you first started, was it all about what you wanted to do for you, or was it about what you wanted to do for other people? Well, mainly for other people. I mm-hmm. feel like that vision of um, 
the store that I want to have for artists is for the support. I, I, when I was living in Atlanta, mm-hmm. I felt like um, the support was there as far as like fan wise, but mm-hmm. not as far as like other artists. Um, right, I see what you're saying. Like, are you saying? I mean, you say other artists. Do you mean like networking in a sense? Yeah, okay. I mean networking was there, but. One of the main reasons why I left Atlanta was because the people are a little bit more flashy and like okay. you know out there, and I feel like everybody wanted to be a stylist. Everybody's right. a photographer. And everybody, you know, I've heard that too. A yeah. lot of people in Atlanta like really kind of go for the same thing, mm-hmm. and I can relate to that being in Philly. Everybody says everybody wants to be a rapper. Yeah, so I definitely could like concur with what you're saying. Yeah, so, so it was so like, you, I mean, it's like. You know, especially people go to Atlanta thinking that they're about to be famous. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's yeah. the black Hollywood and, like, you know, people, um, it's a lot of TV shows mm-hmm. and, like, the, the music industry is crazy. So, but when it came down to art or, like, the artist community, it was not really much of a community, I felt okay. like, especially being in fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, like, my degree is in fashion design and merchandising and, like, okay. finding an internship and finding jobs or being in a field that I wanted to be in was a little bit harder because you got, you know... Tanequa over here that you know can afford to buy some Louboutins right. but is driving a Honda but it's like oh my auntie gave me five shirts that I'm about to throw on this model and right. like I'm a stylist now so it was like I didn't like that but mm-hmm. when I started this it just was like you know I'm, I love art in every form mm-hmm. like if you can make something that's one of a kind I don't care if it's a, a piece of photography or if you made a light fixture or a table or whatever like if it's dope and you made that like to su- have the support mm-hmm. I think that that's what kind of drove me right that's like what drives me to keep going and like be there and support other people I mean, as long as you support me I mean I'm right. the only child so I'm like right. you know I need people to support me right. no, but <laughs> you know to have that it's like I think that's a main thing as long as you got some backers yeah, if you got a solid group of people that can't they don't have to be your fans or right. you know a consumer but if it's a fellow artist that believes in you or mm-hmm. if it's a community of people that believe in you that can that helps drive you to keep going so yeah, and I can definitely, like, agree with what you're saying because being here, like, honestly, I, like, I've never been to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Like, I've never even been to, like, New York. Mm-hmm. And, like, people say, like, it's so different out there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, hearing it from somebody that's been there, mm-hmm. you'd be like, well, I heard it, but I've never been there to right. experience it. Right. So it was kind of crazy because what you're saying is how I feel about Philly. Yeah. For people to come here mm-hmm. for a different vibe. And mm-hmm. I won't lie, like, you know, the, being, like, an artist in, like, the art community of Philadelphia, mm-hmm. it is a lot of people that are back you because they're, mm-hmm. they're striving and trying to do the same thing, exactly. trying to be the next up. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely agree with that. But yeah. I would but one thing I do want to ask you, would you say that it's very different or really similar in the creative community? Um like being from Atlanta then coming to Philly. I think that it's a little bit better. Um I think that I'm still kinda like getting my feet wet with, mm-hmm. with networking. Okay. Um as far as like finding people in my realm right. um but i think that the the support system is pretty much there it's a lot of events that happen um throughout the city just to showcase people right i think that's wonderful regardless of if you a rapper you're trying to be a rapper right. or if you you know like the philly art collective like oh yeah i do I've that this would be it. like my fourth time doing it it's gonna be tomorrow um <laughs> <laughs> definitely not see <laughs> but um that's my fourth time doing it um and just all the people that come out all the different types of people that come out and support i mean you got older people to come in there just for the art or like you know just to see the jewelry or then you got the younger crowd you got the hipsters you got you know people that their moms drag them out or whatever Mm -hmm. um i think stuff like that when you have when you're able to participate or see that or go and support things like that, I think that that's wonderful. Before I even moved here, I was like, let me see, like, how, like, the artist community right. is. And, like, just researching, like, I found maybe, like, four or five sites off the back that was just, oh, like, yeah, okay. join our community. And, like, um, even, like, artist loss. Like, you got to be an artist to even live in this building. Or, oh, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, stuff like that, I was like, okay. I think this might work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's your biggest advice to people that's like, you know, starting off with, you know, the field that you're in? Like what kind of advice would you get? 
Um, well, I think my biggest advice is to remember that you have to be passionate about it, right. to be honest, because you won't really see a turnaround or a profit in mm-hmm. your pocket um, for a little bit. And that's okay. almost in any, yeah, anything, any yeah, field that anything. you do. Um, but just remember, like, don't do it for the money. Mm-hmm. Like, and you, you have to, exactly right. do it because you're passionate about it and you have to be dedicated to it mm-hmm. because, I mean, you can be sitting on, you know, go through your own wardrobe and like, oh, I, I can sell these 20 pieces. Mm-hmm. But like going out, being smart about the amount of money that you spend on one item right. um, and to think about that resale of it, just to be smart, do a little research in like how retail works. Um, as far as like what would sell so like don't go buy a jacket for like $30 and be like oh, oh, oh I'm no, about to yeah. sell this for like $60 right. I'm about to sell this for like 80 bucks online <laughs> somebody gonna scoop this up you tried it <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna work it's not but be smart do your research right. honestly and be passionate about it be dedicated be diligent about it yeah. well everybody this is this is job like I'm really like Happy that you came. Thank you for coming. Yay. And no, thank you for coming. No. I need y'all, like, you know, y'all need to hit her up. Follow her because she got some great items, y'all. Like, don't At go point get that $60 vintage. jacket if you get a five. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't do that, y'all, but make sure follow, tell them they can uh, follow you. You can follow me on Instagram at Point Blank Vintage. I also sell on Mercari, at, and the name is Point Blank Vintage. And just once you follow me, you'll see I do a bunch of pop up shops. I'm always out here. She's always out here, yo. Out here. Y'all already know where to follow me Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram. So make sure you follow me at The Ken Lowe Show. And that's all, folks. Hey. <laughs> this is nice. Yeah. It's gonna be leaking out my breakthrough truth. I dominate break loops, giving Mike's ministry cycles. Streets disciple. I rock beats this mega trifle. And groove even smoother than.